I grew up in Graham, North Carolina. It is a wonderful small town. And we lived right there on Main Street, and I had in my backyard a basketball goal. Now, today's young people think, well, everybody has a basketball goal, but no, a neighborhood had a basketball goal when we grew up. And we had a goal because we rented the house. But we had this goal for my daddy because my sister Catherine was a scrappy basketball player, and I was coming right along behind her, and at age 13, I was already six feet, two inches tall. So all the boys in my grade in my neighborhood would come over to play. I remember it. They were about... <laughs> I went to my high school reunion last summer, and there they were. They were still right there. <laughs> but an interesting thing would happen. If I came out the back door and there were three or four boys there shooting and playing, all I had to do was walk out of the house. They stopped the game and put me in the game. One day, someone from another neighborhood was here, and I heard him say, what are you letting her in the game for? And the other person said, she owns the goal. <laughs> I had forgotten that story until I was asked to speak for the celebration of 100 years of women at Auburn University. I was not in the first class. <laughs> and at the end of the speech, independent of each other, three or four different matriarchs of Auburn would come up to me and say, not having heard the other one, you got your speaking ability from your Grandma Freddie. Well, I knew my Grandma Freddie. I was grown when Grandma Freddie passed. So that afternoon, I went to my Aunt Carolyn's house, and I said to Aunt Carolyn, what is this about Grandma Freddie being a speaker? I'm a professional speaker. I never have heard this. Aunt Carolyn said, oh, darling, your Grandma Freddie was an excellent speaker. <laughs> she wasn't anything like you. She didn't have a brochure. <laughs> But she would put together little programs and then they would run their course. And she said the same thing that you and all your speaker buddies say. You say you can make a living because from time to time, every group needs a little program. So Grandma Freddie would put together a little program and she would go from Auburn and she'd do the Methodist Church, the Baptist, the Catholics, the Rotary, and just run the course and do another program. I was flabbergasted. I just, I couldn't believe it. People had always told me that I inherited Grandma Freddie's sense of showmanship, which is a deep southern phrase for likes to be the center of attention. <laughs> but, but nobody had ever said that she was a, a professional speaker. I said, I just can't, can't believe that. And then Carolyn said, I think, looking back on it, her best program was her last program. It was on her trip to the Holy Land. And what made it such a great program was she had a huge box of slides. And when she would tell a story, she went over to the college, which was Auburn University, went over to the college and got a pointer from one of the history professors and just kept it forever. And she said <laughs> she would point to somewhere and then she would say, when we were here, and then she would tell the story. And she said, you can see where that would make it a lot more interesting. And I said, it sounds like PowerPoint is what it sounds like. <laughs> but I said, I am flabbergasted. I guess everybody else in the family knew it but me. And I guess everybody in the family was proud of her. And Aunt Carolyn said, we were. We were. We were so proud of her. <laughs> We'd have been a lot more proud, though, Jeannie, if she had ever actually been to the Holy Land. <laughs> Freddie went all over the state of Alabama. She was president of the Alabama Methodist Women. I know that. Did she go to every church doing a program on the Holy Land? And she never had been to the Holy Land? <laughs> Carolyn said she went on a trip. I know she went on a trip. I made the reservations. I took her to the airport in Montgomery. But she always got confused about whether she was on the Nile or the Rhine. And then in some gift shop, probably back here in the States, she bought a big box of slides. <laughs> I was there the first night she did the program for the Methodist. I was running the slide projector. And she was saying, let me tell you of an interesting story that happened. Now she said, by the way, I have some slides here on the Holy Land, but somewhere between the Methodist and the Catholics, all that changed to when I was here. <laughs> I just can't believe this, Carolyn. What if everybody in Auburn, Alabama had found out about it? She said, oh, honey, everybody knew. 
what difference did it make? You've always said everybody needs a little program, and I remind you, Grandma Freddie owned the slides. <laughs>